friends, uh, thank you for your interest in p-values and my research. Uh, I'm going to show uh, a few results and comment on a paper I have online. It's a little technical. Also, I apologize for the lighting. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not good at it. And, uh, it's mostly about contents. So what is the problem with p-values? A researcher publishes a paper. His p-values pass the test the test being being lower than 5%, whatever p-value means for now. Uh, the paper is published. Eight years later, someone tries to replicate and discovers that, no, the paper fails. We don't pass at 5%. Uh, you're a moron. Uh, the researcher is depressed. Uh, he doesn't understand what's going on. He thought he did a good job, and nothing has changed. Uh, is this... Uh, you know, a surprise? No, should not be a surprise. I wonder why people are surprised and there are problems with the protocol. Uh, but anyway, I'm not interested in psychology, <laughs> interested in probability, interested in misunderstanding the probability, especially uh, 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 this acute misunderstanding of probability among researchers. So let's say what we have here in uh, the, the paper, that graph, simple graph, on the left. On the left, you have. <laughs> You can, I suggest you open the paper while, while uh, looking at, 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 uh, at, at the video. The, uh, we have here a, uh, a generated by Monte Carlo. You, you know God tells you the p-value is 12%. So in the long run, you're going to run the same experiments off of what we call statistically identical samples. So in other words, the same story. It's just different realization. And we'll see later when I show you how we do it by Monte Carlo. You're going to get sometimes 12%, very often 4%, very often uh, uh, 2%. I'm saying the p-value is 12%. But on average, if you do it a trillion times, you'll get 12%. So the, uh, is, the surprise should not be a surprise, uh, but to understand it, we need something called the meta distribution, the distribution of that probability, because p-value is a probability, so the probability of that probability exceeding certain amount, based on sample size. Now, notice that our result doesn't depend too much on n, because n is already included in the computation of the p-value. <laughs> p-value is a normalized distance from it's computed off of a what we call Z or T, a normalized distance from whatever uh, you're measuring, namely the center of distribution or something like that. So let's see how things work by Monte Carlo. Let's generate a Monte Carlo thanks to uh, Mathematica. <coughs> and uh, we have here a distribution. Uh, the, we generated now distribution is Gaussian, uh, some variable follows a Gaussian distribution with a mean 0.5. And you want to do a, a t-test to see if uh, your mean is higher than zero or, or not higher than zero is statistically significant. And you have a, uh, a mandate to figure out uh, if the thing works or not. <coughs> Standard. I could generate something other than normal distribution, no, not much difference. Now, it so happens that the normalized the 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 observe the means that you're going to get in your sample divided by the standard deviation uh, of that sample divided by square root of uh, number of uh, observation follows a student t with something like uh, n minus one observation degrees of freedom so that's a distribution and as n increases, it started to look more like a Gaussian, although I've argued elsewhere, it never looks like a Gaussian. Don't waste your time, or in the tails will not look like a Gaussian. Anyway, so this is, now we generate this. TA is a table. We generated, the mean is 2.8, say 2.8 standard deviations away, almost, uh, but it's in T space, not in Gaussian space. Uh, so the TA, look at it, we have different realization. So, so you're getting this. Now, what is the T value? And, and this is a histogram we get from this TA. We do a histogram, look, and you see how quick Mathematica is. Thanks, Wolfram. So now what I'm going to do is using, you know, that distribution that we saw, 
convert these with uh, uh, what we call survival probability, probability of exceeding that number, 2.8, or the, the pan, each sample will have a different number, probability of exceeding these numbers using a distribution that has zero mean. That's it. Okay, Using distribution that has zero mean, you try to get those probabilities. I'm, I'm doing now TA2 is survival function, and let's do TA2 to see how it looks like. We have a lot of data, different probabilities. So basically, each sample of 30 drawn from a, a perfectly identical phenomenon. It's a pool of something that has known properties. In the long run, you're going to get something. Each sample that has 30 delivers a different p-value. <laughs> okay, So we see that here. And this uh, do the histogram p value. The more interesting is not that it's stochastic. Look how skewed it is. This this is I mean uh, someone for someone coming from financial markets obsessed with skewness. You see this, you say, oh my God, I've never seen this, almost never seen this. So uh, and of course uh, now analytically uh, by theorem, it's vastly more robust to do the exact distribution. So see what can you expect? We did that analytically in a paper, and I compared it to what we have here. And, uh, and and the sample, what, what we see in a sample, and what's expected from the, the analytics, the, the, what we call the explicit derivation, not the simulated derivation. <laughs> so, uh, and then how does the analytical curve look like? Here it is. At, this is the median P, 0.5. You draw. 0.12 is a median p, the true p, in other words, 0.12. How many observations are going to have here? Enormous, you see. And and uh, visibly, the, the, the distribution is very long. It took me a while to do it, but uh, I'm not good at bridge. I'm not good at tennis, so it, it frees up my time. So I got time for this uh, kind of stuff. So you get, uh, uh, so, so look at, now we can, with this, we can figure out exactly what the p-value is, and this can be useful. Uh, what can it be uh, useful for? Now, what can this be useful for? A lot of things. We have, we can look at what we call distribution of the minimum or maximum, extrema, and figure out uh, if uh, when you have a p-value, a true p-value of 0.05, uh, uh, what you expect to observe. And also figure out what we call the researcher option. The researcher tries 30, 40 uh, uh, times and, and then gets a p value of 0.04, it publishes a result. We can smell, you know, basically how many, uh, what, uh, well, two things. Either you can figure out what is, what, <laughs> what is the upper bound that he's going to publish, or lower bound, for, for, of course, the lower, lowest p. Uh, based on number of trials, we can figure out, based on his publication record, what his true P is. We can do a lot of things because we have a distribution, we have something close for him. I think the results are right, as you saw from simulation, seems to match the analytics. Um, that's the discipline you learn from trading, because when you put money on something, you want to know if the thing can, the, the <laughs> works before. But, um, uh, of course, errors can still creep in. Uh, maybe there's things that formal proofs need to be cleaned up, um, but uh, and also I did it off of the median because by symmetry the the, the beauty of, of the t distribution is that it's perfectly symmetric. So uh, you know uh, the 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 mean of the t distribution is uh, identical to the median. So you can when when in my tra some transformation I did um, I had to pull the the <laughs> The, the median, uh, which is more robust than the mean, and, and somehow uh, the integral converges. Otherwise, you have to do it numerically, and it's much more complicated. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to me. And to repeat, don't be a sucker. Uh, don't think uh, that uh, things are deterministic. And don't be fooled by the fact that someone has scaled by number of observations, because the meta problem is not solved that way.